Hi, I'm Mark, coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Today is Sunday in January. Uh, my cameraman and myself aren't really sure of the date, but it's somewhere around the middle of the month. Okay, but it is Sunday. Anyway, um, it was 50 degrees yesterday, and most of our snow melted. Um, today it's down around uh, probably 30 degrees, and uh, it rained this morning. And uh, we have something going on out here that I thought you might be interested in. This is pasture farrowing of pigs, right? Now, our pigs are our Mangalitsa pigs, and uh, we've kind of planned it so that they would have a farrowing midwinter. We, we wanted them to farrow in January. And the reason we do that is because these pigs will be ready, uh, the babies will be ready for sale in the spring. And that's when people like to buy a baby pig because it's a little bit warmer and easier to take care of. These pigs can go for uh, the entire uh, growing season, say, uh, you know, a lot of these pigs will probably leave here in April, uh, and they can go from April until December, and they can be slaughtered for meat. So um, I, I encourage people to do that. Buy a, a couple baby pigs. It's always better to buy two than one, and uh, feed them your table scraps, uh, scrounge as much food as you can, Stay away from corn if you can, if you want a good quality carcass, and you will have a nice pig. Okay, let me uh, kind of run down what we have here. Uh, as you can see, this field is been defoliated. Uh, these guys have been out here for probably three months now, and there was, when they started, we had this sown into a uh, forage crop and they've taken that out of there uh, and they've taken off every every living piece of, uh, of foliage off here and you can see they've graded it out really nice for me so when I get them off of here in the spring I'll be able to plant that field again and then midsummer we'll have a nice crop of turnips in there or mangles or field peas or you know what whatever we take a notion to put in there and keep in mind when we sow this field when we plant this field we don't have to do it very carefully it's not going to take a lot of equipment all we have to do really is go out there and throw the seeds if we don't have a, a seeder and a seeder I mean one of those whirly gig things that you put a couple pounds of seeds in and they they fall down and the thing throws them out that's that's sufficient enough we don't need an actual planter to do this uh, and it, it's just foot power going out there and, and then we'll need to drag something over it like an old bed spring uh, you know a harrow is what you really need and a tractor but if you don't have one of those you could use a, a four-wheeler or get a couple of the kids get some feral children out there with a bed spring and a couple ropes and you just walk this the length of it and and it'll turn some of those seeds in and they'll be able to get a, a foothold and grow. And they're not going to have a whole lot of weed competition because the pigs have taken a lot of the weeds out. They've eaten the weeds and turned those weeds into pork. Okay, so what we got going on here is we've got uh, a bunch of mama pigs out here and a couple days ago I noticed that they were doing a little digging and then they would pick up pieces of straw and carry it around in their mouth and that is a, a telltale sign that they are about to give birth, or pharaoh is the proper word. So what we did was we brought our portable shelters out. See these white things? Those are portable shelters. We don't keep these those in here all the time. These type of pigs need very little shelter, even in the brutalest of, of, of winters. Uh, they have a little house down there that they can all fit into, but most of the time the group of them will just lay They'll pick a spot and they'll just lay up here and they'll all kind of muddle up together. Sometimes you come out in the bad snow and uh, you can't even see them because the snow will have covered over them. But they're warm, they have a thick coat of, of fur uh, and, and they do just fine. Okay, um, now you might ask the question, why would you want to farrow your pigs out on the field when you have that nice barn up there? Okay, here's the answer. These are heritage pigs. These happen to be Mangalitsas, but there are 126 varieties of heritage pigs 
in the world, uh, in, in the United States, I don't know what the number is, but there's an ever-increasing network, and I have, I have lots of names of people that, uh, that have come to me and said, I, you know, I grow this, I grow that, so if you want to know, just give me a call on the phone, I can tell you what, what I know is available out there. Uh, a heritage pig is a pig that hasn't been crossbred a whole bunch. Um, and uh, like there's Gloucesters, there's Old Spots, there's uh, Durox, there, you know, there's lots and lots of them and a person can probably go online and, and look at them and see which ones you would like. We've gone through a lot of them and for my likings, this pig suits my needs, has a good layer of fat on it and uh, the meat is nice and dark red. Okay, so they're a heritage pig. Uh, they have very good mothering instincts. All right. Now, what that means is um, these pigs. These are new moms. They've never had babies before. This is uh, my F2 group of sows, and <clears throat> I don't have to teach them what to do. It's instinctive. Nature teaches them what to do. So when they are show giving me signs that they're about to feral. If it's a beautiful day out, I will do nothing more than break a bale of straw out here and they'll find it and they'll have their babies in the straw. It keeps them off the mud. Uh, but if it's going to rain, then I will break out these porta huts. And you might not have porta huts and you might just need to find a place that's uh, you know close to a building where you can get them under an eave or something like that. But you don't need a whole lot for a heritage pig to uh, farrow them outside. Now, all we did yesterday was put these huts out here, these portable huts. We put them out, we took a half a bale of straw, and you know straw is a, a, it's a, it's a waste product from small grains production, you know it's the, the very yellow stuff, not hay, you don't want to use hay. Straw is uh, nice and dry and it sheds um, moisture and there's insulation qualities to it that are uh, really, really good. If you get some sometime and you need to take a nap, bust a hail open, uh, a bale open, spread it out, lay down on it, and then you'll see how warm it is. We throw a half a bale in these huts, and then the moms figure it out. They're going to look for a good place to have their babies. They go in, they make a nest, they lay down, they have their babies. We're at the house eating dinner. We don't come down here and watch them do it. And then we come out the next morning and check on them, and sure enough, there'll be seven nice little babies. And uh, they're, you know, nursing their mother, and the mother's happy, everybody's happy. In uh, maybe 10 days or so, you'll see all the baby pigs running around out here. We'll probably have snow back by then, and they'll be out playing in the snow. They have a good time. Now you can see this this area of, of the farm, this is important to know, this area of the farm was very low. Uh, I couldn't cut hay off of it. It didn't grow things very good. Uh, this was a hay field a long time ago. And so we said, well, this would be a good place to grow pigs. And it turned out very good to do that. Now the pigs have taken this field and transformed it from uh, a very bad field to a very fertile field. Okay, I'm going to climb in there in a minute. One of the things I want to show you is the other side of the hut, the business end, where the where the moms and the babies are. Before I do that, um, how did I orientate these huts and why? Okay. Okay, we're inside the pen now. Pretty good. This is about an acre that we're on, and uh, I th I would say we have ten sows in here at this time and we've had five of them that have gone that have farrowed starting yesterday morning I guess okay here's one of our huts uh, we get these huts from uh, from farm tech these are about 250 bucks a piece put them together right they're indestructible I've had these ones for going on eight years and they're they've been seen a lot of use all right 250 bucks it's paid for in the first year first year and to get a lot more use out of it. Okay, now I've orientated this to the southeast, southeast, right? the opening is going southeast. Now I do that because where I'm here, where I am in northern Michigan, the relative wind 
is coming out of the southwest. Right? So that wind is going to hit right here. What I don't want is the wind blowing in here. Because the wind is the enemy of a freshly born pig that's that's wet. Right? They can freeze like a pixicle pretty quick. And sometimes the moms are not exactly tracking when they, especially first time moms, they don't exactly know what they're doing, so they could hang their butt out here and uh, we could have pixicles in a hurry. Um, okay, so let's look in here. Oh, another reason why you orientate it that way is because uh, the animals go through the night and then right at dawn it's cold and then when the first light comes up, when the sun comes up, it comes up kind of low on the sky in the east and they'll get light coming right in here. And those animals can do a lot with the energy from the sun uh, first thing in the morning. They really can. It helps them want to get up and eat and carry on their day, sort of like us. All right. So let's look in here. Now what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to get her upset. All right. She's she knows me, and so she's not too worried by me. Um, and, and heritage pigs generally are um, not aggressive when they feral. Uh, pigs that have been domesticated a long time and been crossbred, usually like the the white pigs that uh, you know we see in CAFOs. If you get one of those and bring that to a farm like this, they're aggressive when they have babies. And They'll come right out of there at you. She won't, but I'm not going to present her with a, a large profile of myself just because I don't want to upset her. She's in there and she's calm with her babies. But you can see she's not charging out of there to take my, my leg off. She's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven babies. Now you're going to see that they're shivering. That's an involuntary action that they are, it's programmed into them to keep their, uh, their muscles uh, circulating the blood that's in their system, okay? Okay, this is a good setup. She's made this nest and we've given her a little advantage of this porta hut to keep the rain off of her. Um, this weather is supposed to clear and we're supposed to just get real cold, but no precipitation. So we've got several other pigs and some of them are laying over there and they're going to need to farrow today. Okay, and we will just be putting out a bale of straw for them and they can lay right outside in it. So long as we keep the wind off of them, they should be fine. Okay, it's pasture farrowing. That's it from Baker's Green Acres. Remember, anyone can find it.